What's going on YouTube OCD for EDC here and what I got for your face balls today. We're looking at something really special here today. We're checking out the Armor Knives Squirrel. Now this one here is the Squirrel 3 and it's got textured titanium with like a checkered uh, texture on it as well as a copper and 80 C, uh, CRV2 blade steel absolutely gorgeous super unique knife and then I've got another one the other one that I have uh, is in this pouch right here it is uh, these are the pouches that the knives come in I actually met the lady that makes these pouches at uh, a blade show really cool and I really like the the quality of the leather here is really fantastic you can see the uh, armor knives uh, logo right there and it says made in the United States of America love to see that but let's take a look at this unwrap this little uh, pouch here and here is the second knife and it is also the squirrel model and this one here is the squirrel 4 and so what we're looking at here is polished titanium with a lightning anno finish and the blade steel on this guy is also Damascus. This one is 1095 Damascus with 15N20. So we'll talk a little bit about the steels on both of these. The Squirrel model overall is just a super, super unique knife. Really, really cool. The ergos on this thing are, they're just fantastic. I mean, it fits so well in hand. I actually took both of these knives with me down to Blade Show so everybody could uh, take a look at them. Most people are not familiar with armor knives this is one guy working in his shop out in california and he's got a tormach in his shop he's making these knives he's doing fantastic work they're not perfect but they are really really cool and he also sent a little package over let me grab it he sent me an envelope here where i think there's going to be some hardware in here for this textured titanium one, but let's take a look in here real quick. There we go. So we've got, yes. So here is the Squirrel 3. Uh, that's the one with the copper Damascus. And here is the Squirrel uh, 4. And we've got the correct hardware for it uh, right here. So we'll disassemble this one and replace the hardware so you guys can see internally in here because there is some fantastic milling and stuff going on inside these knives. Real quick, uh, I've got a huge level of appreciation for what this guy's doing. Just the, the detail work on here is fantastic. I really love the design. He's got all sorts of little Easter egg stuff going on. So like the Band-Aid logo is milled into the spine of the blade right there. There's all sorts of that kind of stuff going on, which we'll see more when we pull this one apart. Uh, I haven't pulled it apart yet, but I have been able to look down in there with a flashlight, so I see the stuff that's going on inside. The grinds, they are flat ground blades, but the geometry is extremely well done. This thing is super thin. We're talking like 10 thousandths behind the edge. So these knives are incredible performers, as well as just being ergonomically fantastic really really good user knives for sure and the price on them for being full customs you know this one here is 550 dollars and this one here with the copper damascus is 650 and i feel like that's kind of a kind of a bargain honestly for what you're getting here like i said there are a few issues um, but they are things that can be fixed easily uh, and we'll get into those things so <clears throat> real quick on the steels this guy here with the copper Damascus has a core that is 80 CRV2. And this is a steel that's been around for a very, very long time. It is a very high carbon tool steel. Uh, it does have some chromium, does have some vanadium in it. It's extremely tough. Uh, there's a lot of people that use it to make like ax heads and things like that. So it's an incredibly tough steel. But in this particular application here, the copper is there just for aesthetics. You can see that the copper stays quite a ways away from the cutting edge. And so the, the actual cutting edge here is the 80 CRV2 steel. But I really love the contrast. It looks beautiful. 
and he did an extremely good job with it. You know, really just kind of fits the aesthetic of this knife. That, uh, that part is fantastic. Now on this one here, this is the 1095 and 1520N, <clears throat> or uh, I'm sorry, 15N20 uh, blade steel. So I'm sure most of you guys have probably heard of 1095. The 15N20 is another uh, high carbon steel that has a lot of nickel in it. And it's incredibly tough as well. Not a stainless steel, but you can see just the absolute beautiful Damascus going on here incredibly well done absolutely gorgeous the etch on it is beautiful so really really cool knives you can see here we got uh, like i said there's easter eggs all over these things with the band-aid logo and the spine of the blade as well as on the pocket clip right there and just overall they're they're really really well made custom knives now the things that in my opinion could use a little bit of improving the design on the pocket clip although i love the way it loops over the the overall design of the clip is great however the ramp going into the pocket is good the ramp coming out needs a little work uh, this thing is really difficult to get out of the pocket you really kind of got to lift the clip a little bit uh, once the it just needs the ramp reprofiled on the back side to make it uh, come out of the pocket a little better again in my opinion the other thing that this knife could benefit from would be a detent ramp the detent uh, ball on this knife there's yeah it would just it would help it out in the action department significantly if it had a detent ramp as well as keeping the etch off of where the detent ball rides so <clears throat> short of that and i'm really kind of nitpicking here like i said for $650 and $550, these two knives are are steals, in my opinion. Uh, I don't think you're getting this level of materials and this level of fit and finish from any custom maker for that kind of money. With all that being said, there there are a few things that could be improved upon. Let's, uh, let's get into one of these guys here real quick. Grab a couple tools. Grab a couple drivers out here. I think... The pivots are T15, I think. Yeah. So I've got a T8, and then let me grab a T15 here. Actually, that might be T20. Yeah, it is, T20. When these knives uh, first came to me, um, I Molly had been dealing with the gentleman from Armor Knives online. Uh, he just emailed us kind of out of the blue and asked us if we wanted to take a look at these two knives. She uh you know based off the email and stuff uh decided that it was something that i would probably be interested in and from the way she explained it to me i was expecting these to be fixed blades <laughs> and so i was uh, pleasantly surprised when i opened these knives up and saw uh well saw these i i was a little bit shocked to be honest with you okay so there's one let me get the blade out of here I'll just set that off to the side for a moment. Get the pivot out. All right. Just set that there for right now. And let me grab a cleaning cloth. We'll grab a couple Q-tips. Okay. There is a hardened steel washer in there. And we've got an internal stop pin in the blade. So stop pin is in the scale or the, the frame there. Okay. All right. One of the things that I wanted to show you the all of the easter eggs that are going on here he does an incredible amount of engraving you can see that we've got just massive weight relieving going on because of how light these things are when i first opened this i was questioning whether or not this was aluminum uh, because it, it it's just so lightweight it's incredible 
uh, but it's for sure titanium. Once I saw this one, I knew for sure it was Ty. Uh, but I'm just, it's so unbelievable how light these, uh, these knives are. And so right here you can see, and it's going to be hard to show up on camera, but it's spelled out right here and it says made in the United States of America. I'll try and hold that up close so you guys can see it, but the, the lettering is so small that it's really, really difficult to see it. Looks like there's some gunk and stuff down in there. I'm trying to get it cleaned up here. All right, so right here, if the camera will focus. Come on, baby. Yeah, it's, it's going to be really difficult to focus on that, but... Trust me when I tell you, right along there it says, Made in the United States of America. And then right down in here is his signature milled into the backspacer right in that spot. And then back here uh, we've got a outline of the state of California right there. So that one you can see, I'm sure. Okay, and then on the frame lock side... We've got the armor logo, the Band-Aid logo right there. And again, you can see all the weight relieving pockets going on. I mean, pretty much anywhere that he could, he weight relieved. And we've got some, you know, really, really nice milling going on. Hidden hardware on the pocket clip. Just absolutely beautiful. The uh, milling and checkering pattern on the titanium. The polish on the tie is absolutely gorgeous. We've got some contouring going on as well. And then you've got this really beautiful uh, little kind of picture framed mill line that runs all the way around the exterior of the knife or the perimeter of the knife. It's just really, really well done. And I'm you know, certainly can appreciate the level of craftsmanship that went into making these knives. They're absolutely gorgeous. The reshaping on the pocket clip, like I said, these things, it's really minor. It would improve the functionality, in my opinion. And like on this one right here, I'll show you. So you can see here that this area has been polished right here, but you can still feel... Um, the uh as the detent ball rides over this damascus you can feel it you know kind of chattering through the highs and the lows there and you know whether or not that area was etched uh first or if it was polished after the fact either way you know he tried to improve that and really the best way to improve that is to mill uh, mill the uh, the detent ball flat so you don't have you know if you look at that detent ball, you can see that it's completely rounded. And so that means the point of contact is just very, very small. And because it's so small, it can drop in those little valleys and the differences in height as this works around through the, the, uh, uh, the travel arc. But if you machine the top of that off, that detent ball, and make it flat, well, now we've got a wider contact patch and then our uh, uh, PSI, or the pounds per square inch of surface area, uh, is decreased. And the surface tension is made a little bit less by spreading it out over greater area. However, if you mill too far, then you don't have enough contact inside the detent hole. So, I mean, it's a, it's a very fine line of getting that just perfect. And this comes down to, you know, the intricacies of knife making. You can see here... You know how much that detent ball sticks out um, all that stuff matters and I think I'm gonna do a, a little like video series on the mechanics of pocket knives like all the different lock designs and different styles and stuff leave a comment down in the in the comment section let me know if that's something you guys would be interested in talking about like all the different details about how each different lock type and different mechanism operate and what makes them work you know, we're riding on steel bearings here. We've got steel cages, steel balls. That's fine. Uh, <clears throat> the bearing pockets are super deep in the blades. But overall, for a custom knife, you know, by all accounts, a very, uh, very new knife maker, he's doing really fantastic work. I mean, this these knives are really, really well done. 
super impressed with them and yeah they're they're really nice that's for damn sure so let's see what we got here the hardware that he sent i was kind of expecting a different uh, pivot but that's not what he sent over he just sent body screws okay so we just got okay so these are just some pi polished titanium uh, body screws that are extremely well made they look beautiful so this one here has got blue hardware uh, it's anodized blue and the body screws on this side are blue yeah those are all blue and then these are just plain tie okay well yeah i don't know if he wanted these screws to go in this knife and replace the blue because the pivot is blue is the only reason i'm bringing that up huh i'll have to uh, talk to him about that and ask him what the deal is there but uh, i guess we'll probably just go ahead and put this back together with the hardware that it came with for right now the the hardware is extremely nice and really well made you got you know the uh, uh, the torques are deep enough well, this will show off or not but the the milling for the torx pattern is deep enough that you get you know real positive engagement with your tool so that part's wonderful let me go uh i'm gonna grab some slick them all and we'll put this thing back together and get her lubed up okay i'm back now got a little slick them all uh if you guys are interested you can go to ocdfreedc.com and pick up uh, some slick them all for yourself but we'll go ahead and get this applied in the detent here. I'm just filling the detent hole. And then I'm just going to put a really thin line along the detent track. Perfect. And then I'm going to throw a little bit down in the bearing pocket here. Excellent. All right. Throw a little in the bearing pocket on this side. Excellent. Now we will throw this thing back together. So, yeah. Just going back together here. So the T8 body screws, throw this back in. Perfect. All right. So we can see there that the blade is perfectly centered. Let me get this worked in a bit. Man, I'll tell you, you know, everything on this is just so well executed uh, from the jimping that's on the blade uh, up here in this thumb ramp area 
the the very very minimal flipper tab the flipper tab works perfectly the you know finger flicking is just a joy to use you got this really nice forward choil i mean that grip right there is just fantastic and then with how good the blade grind is uh, we just have just an absolute beautiful user knife like i said the only thing on these you know there are some minor minor little fit and finish details uh but overall you know the plunge grind is great like there's a lot of really well executed details on this knife and for no longer than this guy's been making knives man i'm telling you that he's got uh got some really cool stuff going on here and that's for damn sure <clears throat> but the squirrel uh this one here the squirrel three absolutely gorgeous you can see it on his website this exact one check it out uh, go to armor knives look at the squirrel three and then this one here is the squirrel four <clears throat> absolutely beautiful uh this one here 550 dollars the textured tie with copper Damascus, six fifty, and they are well worth the price for sure. You can see here, you know, exact same design, just a different take. No textured titanium. Uh, this one here's got uh, different Damascus, of course, but still just as beautiful in every single way. And if it were mine, I would certainly. I would have to reshape the backside of the pocket clip a little bit, but again, that's kind of, you know, my personal opinion. Uh, but really, guys, I mean, these things are fantastic. They really are. So I'm super pumped that he sent these over for me to take a look at. I'm really glad that I got to take them down to Blade Show to show them off because I think most everybody that, uh, well, I know, everybody that put their hands on these knives were really impressed especially for the price and especially for being a relatively new maker it's fantastic so uh, mr armor knives has got uh, some pictures up on his website uh, and he's a guy near and dear to my heart in his garage he's got a tormox cnc mill and uh you know a, a 2x72 grinder and a dirt bike i'm down with all of those things for sure and yeah He's doing excellent work, and I can't wait to see what he comes out with uh, moving forward. But these knives are spectacular. If you're interested in either one of these knives, uh, throw a comment up. You can send me an email, info at ocdfreedc.com. I, I will be sending these back uh, to Armor Knives. But like I said, if, if you're interested in one of these, they're absolutely beautiful. I know they're both for sale. So you can hit me up or hit up Armor Knives either way. I can get you in contact with them. If you got any questions or whatever, feel free to leave the uh, comments down below. Check out, I'll link his website in the description below. So check those out. But I'll give you one more look at both of these. absolutely gorgeous the copper damascus is so cool it's really unique and it's just a, a really cool visual thing and everybody uh, that sees this knife is just kind of blown away so that thing is is something special and as well as this one you know the the uh, etching on the damascus is just visually it's it's really impressive so and then functionally it works so so well so that's the thing that's so impressive here is that visually both of these knives are absolutely stunning but functionally they're fantastic as well so anyway guys go and check these out go and show armor knives some love they're absolutely he's absolutely building some gorgeous stuff and and it's reasonable money so that's really cool thanks so much for watching hope you enjoyed it i'm out of here